Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss Java IDEs, uh, editors you can use to create your applications with Java or some other programming languages as well. I'm not going to tell you uh, which one is the best or tell you to install that one, but I am going to give you some options and some thoughts of mine and I will tell you my favorites. At the end I also have a, a brain puzzle, uh, so something uh, fun for you who have learned Java in the old times like me uh, and it might not have been staying up to date because it's a teaser for my upcoming content on this channel. Speaking of which, uh, this channel is an experiment of mine for this year. So if you find something that's useful or interesting or just want to support me, uh, remember to leave feedback, remember to subscribe to the channel, spread the links uh, for anybody who might be interested. So all of that will matter a lot. Uh, for this year, I want to see how this will organically grow, so I'm not going to do any kind of uh, <clears throat> buy any any subscriptions or anything like that. Just make some quality content, short snippets, that, and if they find interested people, if there is a demand for this, I will keep on making this. So that's the plan for this year. That out of the way, let's get started. So topic is Java IDs. Let's dive in. First group that I want to introduce is uh, online editors. So there's some some available. By the way, <clears throat> I will drop any links in my descriptions as usual. So if you see something interesting, you can go there and uh, do your own research. Um, but here is an example of online IDE. So we have a Hello World application. Uh, we can select which runtime we use and they are offering relatively uh, new version of Java version 11. So I can just click it, run it. <coughs> and I'm able to, of course, make modifications and see my modifications here. The great thing about these is that uh, they will work on tablets or phones. So you can actually not, you don't need to install anything locally. You can get started and you can try different things quite easily. Uh, there's a lot of free ones like this one, and also they are provided for other languages than, than just Java. So if you want to experiment with some snippet, uh, this is a great opportunity. Now, uh, there's, some, uh, there's a step of uh, more sophisticated IDEs uh, that you can find. Uh, for example, AWS offers cloud IDEs that are inside the accounts and you can use them via browser. Uh, they are able to do more. So the things that are lacking from this, this is just a code editor and simple compiler. So if you want uh, so some other re uh, re kind of requirements you might be having is how to de deal with libraries and dependencies. And uh, <clears throat> you might also be missing some tools like uh, design tools for, for drawing user interfaces or, or planning them or creating UML diagrams or documentation integrating with Git, etc. So this tool unfortunately doesn't have those, but there's a lot of tools you can use to get those as well. Second uh, group would be lightweight uh, text editors. My preference for those would be Sublime Text, but I could group here also uh, Edit++ and uh, possibly even Emacs or, or Vi editors in Linux systems. <clears throat> the idea behind these text editors is that they are very, very fast and they can do many things. And typically you can extend these as well with plugins. Uh, they will add on top of what I just showed on the online editors. These will add uh, at, at least the concept of a folder and folder structure. And with the plugins, you can sometimes uh, get these to go further. So the, I think the benefit with these is that they are lightning fast and there's not too much uh, extra stuff to worry about. They are also pretty robust. So I typically, whatever machine I have, I typically at least have Sublime installed or something similar as a minimum. It's something I can whip out very fast. <clears throat> For Java editing, then we have the third category, which is the heavy hitters. So we have integrated development environment that comes with a lot of extra stuff you can use. And depending on your needs, uh, needs uh, you might need something like this or you might it might be that the simple fast is uh, better for you. And Eclipse is kind of an industry benchmark. It was one of the earliest free Java editors you can use. You can still use it. You can go here and download it. 
I haven't myself been using these for a long time because I, I felt that Eclipse was uh, too rudimentary and too clumsy, too slow. So my experience was better with some of the other offerings I'm going to show to you. However, it's very extensible. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, so there's uh, great benefits for it as well. And uh, since it's free, it's quite easy to go here, download it, get started and see how you like it. I used to like NetBeans Editor because uh, I had a long career in training. So I was teaching people Java and once I download NetBeans, the good thing is that it already contains a lot of things. So I get some uh, graphical editors and I get the diagram tools, etc. So it's a nice package and the benefit of um, <clears throat> having a lot of tools pre-installed is that if, if a team um, deploys NetBeans to multiple machines, uh, they start out being quite quite the same. So they're same plugins, same extensions. So there's less hassle typically typically that way. So that's a good good thing. With with Eclipse, I had sometimes experience that if I have a team of 10, 10 people, everybody has a different setup and unique bugs. So they, they become like unique snowflakes and maintaining that setup can be tiresome. <clears throat> Recently, I've been using a lot of IntelliJ IDEA. So that's uh, one of the ideas. Uh, while you can get the community edition for free, there's also the ultimate edition that pays pays a bit. So the company where I'm working, we have uh, easy access to the ultimate licenses and it's an awesome experience. However, uh, oftentimes I, I've been setting up uh, machines where I only have the community version available and it goes a long way already as well. By the way, probably worth mentioning that I just started this channel and uh, while this is an experiment for me, right now there's no sponsors. And uh, for the near future, at least, I don't definitely don't intend to have any. So uh, it means that while I sometimes mention things that cost money, it's not a paid commercial. Uh, I'm not uh, advertising things uh, specifically, but on the other hand, I'm not uh, censoring those out either. So uh, IntelliJ IDEA is a good tool, but they are not paying me money to say so. And I'm promoting a lot of the open, open source uh, free options as well, because that's the easiest way to get started. You don't need to pay anything to get a good experience. Uh, all the editors that I'm mentioning here and that are linked in the descriptions, they all have the free offering at least. Some of these don't have any commercial offerings. So final editor, and this one I'm going to dive a bit deeper, is Visual Studio Code. This is from Microsoft and it's, it's an excellent editor. It's not the same as the old Visual Studio. It's just named a bit uh, confusingly. Uh, it's kind of a new editor and uh, it has pretty much all the great things that the other others have here. Somehow I found myself uh, installing and opening this more often than the others recently. It might be because I'm, I'm working in a project where I use Scala and Java and Python. So I alternate uh, across many technologies and this has been pretty good experience for all of them. Um, it comes with plugins installed and you can install extra plugins. Uh, there's a healthy ecosystem providing more free offerings. So I think it's, um, it's quite okay editor. It's quite also rather fast, so it starts fast and uh, it's fast to use. So for those reasons, I like this. It feels uh, kind of fluid for me. So very good job, Microsoft there. I don't often give high praises to Microsoft, but I think this editor managed to break through uh, some, some of the, the editors that were preferred before. And I think that's a good accomplishment. It's not necessarily hugely better or worse, but it's a very kind of worthy, uh, worthy option. So if you are, if you haven't made up your mind, it's a good idea probably to take a look at all of these and then, then decide which is the best tool for you. And if you have made up your mind, it's always good idea to sometimes take 15 minutes and try out something else. So you might be sometimes surprised and figure out that, oh, this is actually better than I thought, or it's other crap. I'm happy I chose otherwise. Okay. 
Um, in this video, I'm not going to cover how to install this except for one thing. So last time when I was talking about how to set up Java, I mentioned that I like to use tools to automate it heavily. So uh, one of the tools is uh, Chocolate because I'm running this on Windows Workstation. So Chocolate is a tool I've used to install v VS Code. And then this allows me to also update it and maintain it quite easily. And most importantly, it allows me to uh, automate the installation so that if I need to swap, suddenly swap uh, machine because my old machine dies or I upgrade it or I want to copy the installation, I just use the automation to do that. And therefore my, uh, my VS code is set up like this on my Windows. Ah, sorry. So I can go to any folder and I can just whip out VS code and start using it. So I think this is uh, quite awesome. Uh, another thing, this I also showed in a previous video. If you haven't looked it, if you haven't watched it yet, go and look it up. But I mentioned that uh, I like the Linux uh, Linux experience. And uh, this is my Ubuntu within my Windows. So let's go here. Let's go to examples. Okay. So one thing I like about VS Code uh, in my Windows setup is that once I installed it in Windows, I'm actually able to open it from here. So I can say code this and now I'm opening my editor to this current folder where I'm at. So it's quite a kind of good integration and rapid, rapid. Uh, I'm able to edit the files within my Linux system, my Ubuntu system, and then still be using the VS code um, in, in kind of Windows level. So that's, that's cool stuff. Uh, that's uh, not a very important detail for you to remember. It's just uh, one, one kind of tiny detail in what I do. If you are running uh, native Linux or if you are l running Mac OS, uh, the experience would be quite the same without any, any virtual machine hassles, of course. So we are almost at the end of my short uh, video today. Uh, we went through some editor choices and I, I decided to show, show you one of them. Uh, the things that you will find from here and appreciate probably we have search tools, so you are able to rapidly go through your files and figure out uh, if there's keywords in them. You can replace stuff in your files. We need to have source control capabilities. I'm using Git a lot in different places, GitLab, GitHub, and, and private repositories. So uh, you want to have integration to that, then you get the version control and you can work with your team in an effective manner. We have pretty good support uh, right out of the box, but you can install more plugins to, to get a kind of, to go deeper if you choose. Then we have uh, extensions. So I have some extensions installed for Java and that allows me to, uh, to do good stuff with Java. Uh, when choosing extensions on any of these IDs, it's good to take a look at how many downloads there is and how much people have liked these because sometimes there is multiple choices. And if you're looking for the best one, take a look at how other people liked it when comparing few different choices. Okay. And finally, whatever editor you choose, uh, it's good idea to spend a little bit of time and set it up uh, to your preferences. So you can choose uh, in pretty much most of these editors, you can choose uh, the theme that you like and you can go and uh, customize the fonts to your liking, etc. So that's uh, kind of a good thing to do. Uh, it, may, it, it makes you own the editor, then it feels more like you. I'm probably not going to stick to this all red, uh, red theme. I have never before used this, <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah. So you find the theme that you like, you edit it. I like to set up the font size to be bigger because I have bad eyesight these days and uh, I'm doing a lot of presentations showing my code around and uh, therefore the big font will make it easier. Also, it keeps keeps me keeps my code more simple because if I can't cram so much on my screen 
uh, I kind of tend to modularize a little bit more. More on that topic coming up later. So I promise to end my session with a teaser. And here is the teaser. Old timers in Java that learned Java long ago, you probably know that Java is a compiled language. So you write the source code. I have the source code here. And then you compile it and then you run the binary that you created. But here is my brain teaser. This is a teaser for some content coming up because later I'm going to uh, dive into some things that have happened with the latest versions of Java. So this shouldn't be working because I'm skipping the compiler step and I don't have any binaries. However, this is something you can do with the most recent versions of Java. So uh, just a teaser, we'll get back to that topic, hold your thought. But don't leave the channel, uh, please subscribe, leave some comment, uh, give thumbs up if you deem this is worthy of interest. And most importantly, send this link of this video to somebody who might be interested. Every share will count. Right now my subscriber count is very meager. Uh, and while I don't have any set uh, hardcore goals, I intend to take it at least a little bit higher. Thank you. See you next time.